Well, thank you everybody for joining today. I'm really excited to have this conversation. Uh, obviously, we're all here to talk about the top SEO problems, aka pains in our side, and how we have, how we address them. And you know, I think the the big thing is that that can feel like a really daunting task for a lot of folks. Obviously. SEO is one of those sort of murkier channels where things aren't always cut and dry. Google's constantly changing its algorithm and what it prefers and what it doesn't prefer. And it can really be time consuming to try to figure out, you know, what, what should I be focusing on? What should I be trying to do? So we really wanted to provide this webinar and give you a couple of tips and tricks of things that you can really focus on um, and understand, you know, why these things may be happening, how to address them, and then how to look out for those things going forward. So today what we're going to dive into is talking a little bit again, how this is going to be helpful for you. How can this benefit you and your day to day life? And then diving into more on the specific SEO problems. So the first one being what I'm going to group as declining visibility because they're really addressed in a similar capacity, and that is rank and traffic. Um, and then diving into declining conversions. And then we'll have a couple of resources and items to wrap up at the end. And then as Brett mentioned, we'll take any questions there as well. So if you have questions, please feel free to throw those in the chat. Um, and we'll try to get to as many as we can here after we get through the content. So you are here obviously because you're looking at ways to figure out, you know, how do I address these top SEO problems? What are things that I should be looking out for? Well, you know, other ways that this is helpful for you, of course, we're all limited on time. And I know many of you on the call today probably wear multiple hats. SEO may just be part of your day to day, and you're really trying to make the most of your time and be most efficient with that. Um, as you're trying to look through analytics and reporting and all other types of resources, there really is a lot to sift through and it's just very time consuming, um, which leads me into my second point, which is that there is a lot of data to sift through and it definitely gets overwhelming. Even for myself, having been doing this for over a decade, it's still quite a lot to go through, knowing where to start, you know, what metrics should I be focused on? How does this compare to you know, other websites? Is that good or bad? I'm not sure. And so really what we wanna do in this uh, presentation today and this conversation is help you to refine and define what those things look like. And then also just helping you to future-proof a little bit. So understanding why these things may be happening and then what to look out for so that you, know, you can plan ahead. Um, there's gonna be some things that you'll see will be out of your control um, and some things that you can plan for. But even with the things that you don't necessarily have control over, there are some measures that you can take so that you can be more prepared. All of this can feel like a really huge puzzle and trying to put together all of these pieces. So let's try to help you put those pieces together today. Um, we're gonna dive into the first bit of the puzzle here, which is like I mentioned, declining visibility, which is rank and traffic. Um, so if we're diving into that, you may be wondering why I decided to group those together. Well, SEO rank and traffic really do go hand in hand. Now, on one hand, when your rank improves, you of course have opportunity to capture more traffic. So if you have better visibility, better chances of being seen, the more opportunity that you have for people to come to your site. And the other piece of that is when your website traffic increases, this has a positive influence on your rank and can help improve your rank. So they're really very closely related, which is why I chose to speak about them together, um, because you'll see that a lot of the tactics really do go hand in hand as well. And overall, both rank and traffic do provide an indication of how many people are actually seeing your content and how much of your target audience that you're capturing. So really, you know, what's your, your impression share? Um, how much of that marketplace and search landscape are you actually capturing and how much of that traffic are you getting? So the problem that you may be coming across from time to time or on a regular basis is you may have noticed that your organic rank and or your traffic has declined on a month over month or year over year basis. You may have not made any big changes to the site other than adding a couple of bits of new content, maybe a few new pages. So you're not sure why things are actually getting worse and not improving when all you're doing is making some small refinements or even trying to add and make things better. So there's a lot of different things that could contribute to this and a lot of factors that go into your visibility overall but there's a couple that i really wanted to touch on today that seem to be the primary culprits and that i think you should focus on as starting points so to start off one possible cause could be seasonality oh, 
Sorry about that. And with seasonality, this is when your business ebbs and flows at certain times of the year due to external seasonal factors. Now, this is something, of course, that you can't control. Um, we don't have any control over consumer demand, when they may need or want a particular product. Um, that type of thing is pretty set in stone and pretty consistent year over year. Now, that being said, you do have control over your response to that seasonality and being prepared for it because you typically know that it's coming, right? So one thing that I would encourage you to do is create a strong library of evergreen content that supports topics that have year round demand. So for instance, if you are a business that's very seasonal and you have a lot of that seasonal based content, try to get creative and think about ways that you can have some content that could be applicable for searches year round versus just those spikes that you may have from time to time throughout the year. And as you're thinking about creating um, that seasonal content and even with your evergreen content, trying to get that content live well ahead of time so that you have enough time for that authority to build up. Um, as you know, SEO does take time to build traction. It can take several months before you really start to see that traction build. So it's important that uh, as soon as you're able to, that you have that published and start linking to it and getting it visibility so that you're able to have that again, build that authority up. Now, this is an example of how you might start to define that, um, looking here at a snapshot from Google Trends. So in this example, I took the term backpacks, obviously a seasonal term. It just came to mind with back to school being so recently. But you can see here where the spike is within the uh, late June to August time frame. And so in this instance, you would want to be creating content well in advance of that July and August time frame so that you're make sure that you're optimally prepared and that you're giving it time to develop that traction. And now, as I mentioned before, with evergreen content, try to think about, you know, outside of back to school, backpacks certainly have other purposes. So let's think about, you know, searches that people may be doing throughout the year that aren't so specific to that back of school time frame. And that could be something like commuting or travel or hiking, things of that nature that maybe have a little bit more longevity where you could try to capture demand year round. The next possible cause of declining visibility or traffic and rank would be a one-off event. And what I mean by that is oftentimes there's instances, especially with e-commerce brands where you potentially had a large sale or a promotion, um, or your business was potentially featured on TV in a prominent media outlet, or maybe you had a new product release. So of course, all of those things tend to prompt and encourage spikes in traffic uh, and activity to your website and sales and things of that nature. So there are regular events that don't happen all the time. Now, again, these are things that are in your control, but you're not necessarily going to be running a sale or launching a new product every month. So what can you do to capitalize on this? Well, you could take a look at the data, um, customer feedback from the event. Is there anything that you can capture from that that could be translated into evergreen content or even uh, design or experience enhancements on the site? So just thinking about, okay, what well, based off how that performed or the data that I'm seeing or any feedback that I'm getting, what are some things that I can maybe translate to my website? And I think a great example of this is one of our clients, um, Bobo's actually, had a feature for one of their oat bars on the Today Show. Um, I think this was last year, last summer. And that was great, obviously on television, really not related directly to SEO or their website per se. But what they actually did was create an evergreen news page on their site that showcased that feature. So they have some content on there. They have a video clip from the feature. It got a lot of buzz. I mean, their, their traffic increased exponentially over the couple of days around when this feature ran. And in addition to just featuring on the website, they thought about creative ways that they could use this in other channels as well. And so what they did was promoted the peanut butter oat bars, which was the featured product via their email campaigns on social media, and just really took advantage of that, that feature and trying to use that to bump uh, their longevity and authority around that product and the content related to that product. So again, just thinking about creative ways that you can potentially take those offline activities and convert them to your website. Another possible cause of declining visibility is competition. Now, this is one that is 
also not in our control. We can't control uh, you know, other businesses that enter or leave the marketplace. Uh, new competitors can enter the space at any time. Existing competitors may improve their presence. Maybe they get savvy and start adding a lot of content or they launch new products or they just start to rank better and have better visibility. Um, this tends to be a really large culprit of declining visibility where I see we start losing share to other websites and trying to figure out, okay, why is that and what can we be doing about that? So one thing I would encourage you to do is regularly reviewing your top rank site sites for your primary target keywords. Now, of course, you're likely going to have lots of keywords for different pages of your site, but try to think about, you know, what are my mission critical, maybe 20, 25 keywords that I really, really care about. And just keep tabs on those and see who's really dominating the first page of the search for that. Take a look at what type of content is ranking uh, and trying to see, okay, is that something that I'm addressing on my site? And not only that, but are you addressing it in the best way possible? Because the goal is you want to have that content, but you want the best version of it out there so that Google in turn starts to favor your content and then ranks you above these other competitors. So really just, again, monitoring that, keeping tabs on that is really, really important so that you don't lose sight of competitors. I think a lot of times businesses make the mistake of defining competitors when they sort of start working through something or they may have a pre-existing notion of who their competitors are, but it's not regularly reviewed and updated. And so they may be missing out on new competitors that have entered the space and are doing really well. So just make sure that you have a regular pulse on that. Along with that is content mismatch. And this is something that I see happen quite often. And what I mean by content mismatch is your content really doesn't align with consumer search intent. And so Google is favoring other content. And the mistake here that I see happen a lot is that uh, businesses tend to really prioritize still having that keyword focused content published. And of course, keywords are incredibly important and it is important to define you know, what your target keywords should be, assess what the search demand is for those keywords and use that as the foundation for your content. But really the first and foremost thing that you should be doing is addressing consumer intent. So when you're creating content, just remember consumer first, SEO second. I know it sounds counterintuitive in a way, but that's actually what Google prefers. So as you're creating this content, you wanna make sure that you're addressing consumer pain points, you're addressing their questions. Um, like I've noted here, really making sure that you have a thorough understanding of who your target audience is you know create those personas for yourself you know who's your target demographic what are their interests what hobbies do they have um, what things are they searching for um, again if you have a particular product how are they searching for competitors similar products and what questions might they have around that and just making sure that all of the most pertinent of those items are addressed in your content so that Google says, okay, this website is actually putting the consumer first. And so I'm going to value that content above some of these others that may not be doing that. And I know that seems like it could be a pretty cumbersome task, but quite honestly, the easiest thing to do is just start to do some random searches within Google. And this is such an invaluable and, and easy and easily accessible tool to use. Um, you can see here in this example, I just put in the term dining table for purposes of this, um, but really taking a look, you can see how insightful that the search result page really is. Um, there's buying guides there at the top that have specific questions called out. You can see a couple of the results here that I've highlighted. These are more of best of lists. And so to me, this is saying, okay, I need to make sure that in some capacity, you know, if I'm an individual brand and I can't necessarily talk about, you know, best of across multiple companies, maybe I want to talk about the best, you know, products that I offer or the best type of product so that I can capture some of this best of content. And by the way, I should also be addressing these buying guide questions specifically around dimensions, material, price, and shape. Just doing a lot of these searches on your own can provide so much insight into what Google is really putting first and foremost and prioritizing and let you know what you should then in turn be prioritizing within your content. Now, on the other hand, this one's a little bit more technical, but technical SEO is still very important, especially when it comes to mobile usability and page experience. And so one possible cause of declining visibility or traffic and rank 
could be that your site is not mobile friendly. Um, so, you know, pages on your site may have a poor user experience. Some of you may have heard of Core Web Vitals or heard that buzzword. Essentially, it's a, it's a series of metrics that Google is looking at that assess your overall page experience and speed. And that is absolutely a ranking factor. It is part of Google's algorithm. It is probably the most important technical piece that uh, should be taken into consideration in, in this day and age. And so it's really important that that is something that you're also keeping a regular pulse on. You can use, uh, these are free tools, Google PageSpeed Insights and Google Search Console. You can check your page experience for all of your page types. So check your home page, but also make sure that you're checking other page types. So if you have a blog, are your blog pages user friendly? Are your product pages user friendly? Uh, your category pages, make sure that you're monitoring all different types of pages because each of them, of course, are going to be set up differently and have different graphics and different content and you know different ways that they're loading. And so we wanna make sure that we're accounting for all of those and that we understand how to address any issues that may arise. So just making sure that all of the key page elements that you have for all of those templates are loading quickly and that your overall mobile experience is good. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're taking into account, again, consumer first, you know, are the buttons easily clickable within a, a phone? Uh, you're not having these, you know, microscopic calls to action that people can't get to or important content that you have to scroll all the way down. So just taking those things into consideration and, and really thinking about how people are interacting with your site and making sure that you're catering to that. So this is just a snapshot from uh, Google PageSpeed Insights. Again, this is a free tool. You can put in any URL from your site and it will assess the performance on both mobile and desktop. And you can see here, it specifically calls out Core Web Vitals. This particular page here um, has failed the assessment and you can see there's a couple of items in red there. Um, we won't get into today specifically what all of these mean, but essentially it's just overall loading, overall user experience. And this is something that you can share with your developers uh, that they would be able to act on because the report does provide detail as to what should be done. So if that's you know compressing code or optimizing images and things of that nature, um, a lot of this is pretty nitty gritty in the technical and, and even over um, a lot of SEOs heads, but certainly dev teams understand what to do with that information when it's passed on to them. So this is a great resource to regular, regularly monitor that type of information. Another possible cause of declining visibility is lack of SERP or search result features. So all of you are probably familiar with uh, the featured snippets or people also ask. So you've probably seen those types of things popping up in search uh, when you've been doing your own personal searches. Now, these change all the time. I've seen them even fluctuate within the same day, day to day, week to week, et cetera. So it could be the case where perhaps you were ranking for a cert feature, maybe now you're not, maybe you never did, but now some competitors are ranking and you're not showing up. And those just capture so much of that search real estate that they can steal a lot of your share. And so it's really important that you're taking measures on your site to do your best to capture those. Now there's no, unfortunately, I wish there was a guaranteed way to, to capture those, but there's not. But there are things that you can do to try and, and capture those best as you can. And so one of the main things is, um, you may have heard of schema markup, which is a type of structured data markup that you add um, within the HTML code that just helps to call out specific features of the site. I think one of the more popular ones to give you an example is recipe schema. So you've probably seen in search results where it will call out the cook time or you know the yield and things like that. Those little snippets of information are marked up via schema markup code. And so there's product page schema that you can do and things of that nature, review schema that can help you be featured more prominently and give you a better chance of showing up for some of these search features. Some other less technical things that you can do as well. The overall page structure is actually super critical and something that we found to be a really important part of your ability to rank and especially for things like featured snippets and people also ask. And this is the page uh, heading structure. So within your page, you'll have 
uh, the main heading, which is your H1, and then you'll probably have some subheadings under that, which will be H2s, 3s, etc. And just having a thoughtful heading structure like that, that distinctly defines the, the sections of your page, can play a huge role in your ability to rank well uh, in the general organic results, but also within the SERP features themselves. So here's an example of going back to my dining table example from earlier. Um, this specific example is one of the uh, buying guides that we saw. So under dimensions, you can see Bassett Furniture is ranking for table dimensions, and they are actually using schema, as you can see in the code there below, um, to rank for a buying guide. So again, you know, something that is a relatively easy code implementation for dev teams to do that can give you a good opportunity to rank for these types of results. Another possible cause is a Google update. So Google loves to keep us on her toes um, and do algorithm updates, uh, which can tend to cause shakeups within the search landscape, could cause your rank to drop and um, resulting in lower visibility for your site. And in fact, uh, just at the end of August, they had a uh, multiple uh, algorithm updates. So sometimes they throw a few at us and we have to stay on our toes with those. Uh, so it's important with these that you're reviewing the components and the timing of those. So, you know, making sure that you're staying educated on what those algorithm updates are, um, you know, search engine journal, um, search engine land, any of those tend to have pretty good summaries of what those uh, different updates are and what they entail and kind of give you a bulleted list of what to look out for. And then taking into consideration whether or not your site is actually violating any of those inclusions. Um, you'll see here the thing that I called out on the bottom is to maintain focus on quality targeted content. And the reason that I'm including that as a generalized statement is because I believe with probably 95% of all of the algorithm updates, if not all of the algorithm updates within the last year or more, Google's answer to how to fix your website woes is focus on quality content, focus on quality content. And that's what they continue to hammer home. Um, in fact, one of the algorithm updates at the end of August was the helpful content update. Um, and this was one where Google is continuing to reinforce, we are going to value and favor content that is consumer centric, and we are going to devalue content that is clearly intended for SEO or search engines only. So again, the, the theme across the majority of their updates is to really focus on your content strategy, focus on that consumer centric content and making sure that it's quality thorough content that is first and foremost for consumers, second for SEO. So that's a little bit on the declining visibility side, talking about you know, things to look out for with rank and traffic. And the next piece that I want to talk about is on the conversion side. So sometimes you'll see, hey, I'm getting a lot of really great traffic. Um, my rank seems to be really great. But for some reason, my conversions are going down, my revenue is down, I'm not getting the same conversions that I was before. Why? I'm capturing traffic and I'm doing everything right. What could be going on? So there's a couple of things. Uh, there's a lot that can go into conversion that is even outside or beyond the scope of SEO. But for today's purposes, I wanted to focus on a couple of things that are in the, the realm of um, the SEO world. So again, what you might be seeing happening on a monthly or year over year basis is less revenue or leads. Um, again, this is assuming you really haven't made any big changes to the site or any of your pages. So you're confused why the sudden decline. Um, on the other hand, maybe you did make some changes. Maybe you went, you underwent a site design, you updated your navigation, um, you, you know, maybe added some images or some new content and you thought that would help the site, but it seems to have made things worse. So what could be going on? So the first cause could be a poor navigation setup. Now, poor navigation can mean a lot of things. Uh, the main thing here that I want to focus on is the fact that your main navigation could be confusing and difficult to follow um, and consumers are just having a hard time finding what they need. So taking a step back to really assess what your navigation looks like, you know, like I say here, avoid a cluttered or difficult to follow navigation. Are you trying to fit 20 items in one menu? Is that really the best way to approach things? You want to really make sure that 
your navigation is mirroring the way that you expect people are going to browse your site. And, you know, that would go back to, again, that consumer data, understanding who your audience is, what are the most important things to them? You know, you may have, going back to the backpacks example, maybe backpacks is one of your items, but you don't necessarily need to call out every single color of backpack that you have as a navigation item because that's just overly cluttered. But maybe you know that there's two or three colors that everybody looks for. And so you certainly want to call those out and then maybe have a catch-all for the others or, or something to that effect. So just again, making sure that the navigation isn't just a dump for all of your content and that it's really thoughtfully structured and things are easy to find. So this is an example from Create and Barrel, obviously a company that has a tremendous product offering and just a ton of products and content. But even in this case, you could see that they really did a good job of making sure that the navigation is clean. Uh, people can easily browse the extensive product selection. Things are clearly labeled. They don't have an unnecessary number of categories listed. Everything is clearly defined. And then they are supporting that with a very prominently featured search bar there on the top left that says, what can we help you find? And so they're making sure that, you know, hey, we've got this clearly set up, we've got the right categories and subcategories, but if for some reason people are still having trouble, we're gonna make sure that we capture them on internal search so that we're not losing anybody. So just again, taking into account the, the user experience because even though it's not a direct SEO metric, it certainly does impact your ability to rank um, and obviously your ability to get visibility and traffic. Uh, user experience can impact things like bounce rate and engagement on your site, and those are things that play into the algorithm. So it's a really important consideration. Another possible cause, this is similar to what we discussed in the declining visibility section, uh, mismatched keyword targeting. And so what I tend to see happening here is that businesses will often choose target keywords because they have high search volume, but they don't necessarily match the content or intent of the page. So you do want to take into consideration search volume, but again, I'm going to keep harping on this, putting the consumer first and foremost. So you know, looking at uh, one keyword just because it has 10,000 searches, well, there may be a better keyword that has half that many searches. And it may seem, again, counterintuitive to target that lower volume keyword, but if it's better aligned with your content and the intent of that page, the page is going to perform better. Um, so just making sure that you're really aligning, again, with consumer intent, page purpose, using those audience personas that you've created and defined to really help you with refining what that target strategy should be. So here's a, a snapshot here from SEMrush that kind of talks about keyword intent mapping. And so, like I briefly touched on, you really want to consider the topic of a specific page and what that intent is around that page. So you're going to have some content, like the diagram here says, that's going to be more informational or top of funnel. So that's going to be more generic. But then you're going to have maybe more research-based content. Um, things like reviews or comparative content tend to be more mid to lower funnel. So those tend to align with longer tailed um, or more comprehensive keywords versus like a one or two word uh, keyword. So just taking into consideration, again, that intent as well as where that aligns within the sales funnel will help you to capture a more relevant audience that's going to be more likely to convert. Another possible cause of declining conversions on a similar uh, vein is irrelevant content. So you may have a page that, you know, you created about, uh, I don't know, let's use the backpack example again, um, you know, the top colors of backpacks, but you don't talk about, you know, the, the backpack color that is trending this year versus last year, or, you know, are what colors are popular for teenagers or something like that. Uh, so the note here is, you know, the content is there, but it's not addressing the main questions or pain points that consumers have. Um, and it's not formatted in a way that's engaging or helpful. And so with that backpacks example, if people are really interested in looking at popular colors by um, their child's age, but you've just listed a top 10 list of, you know, here's some colors that are, that are cool for this year. That's great that you have the content there, but it's probably not gonna perform well because it's not in line with what people care about and what they're looking for. 
Um, and on a, on a similar vein, maybe what's helpful to them is an infographic that displays you know, that information in a, in a more fun uh, visual way. And maybe yours is very text heavy and has a lot of paragraphs and content that maybe is just superfluous and is not really helpful for the consumer. So again, making sure that you're researching what questions that people have related to a page topic and not just writing a generic page. Because going back to my point earlier, we're trying to create, yes, the content that we're seeing that's ranking well on the search results, but we want the best uh, version of that page. And we won't create that by writing generic content. It needs to be really catered to the consumers and what their specific questions are. Um, so this is another great way, um, another great opportunity for you to go back and reference those top rank competitors. So if you have a particular keyword that you know you're going to be targeting for a page, go ahead and put that in Google, see who's coming up in that top two or one or two positions and then what things that they talk about. And that can be a great starting point for you to see, okay, this is what Google's seeing as relevant because this is what consumers are seeing as relevant. So here's an example. Um, this one is just close to my heart right now because I'm in the process of shopping for a new stove. Um, but looking at electric ranges, here's people also ask um, and some of the search result features that are coming back for that. And so again, the search results offer a lot of insight into consumer FAQs and what their main areas of interest are. Um, so you can see here, there's some questions there that could easily, easily be integrated into an FAQ on the page or at least addressed within the content itself. You could even use one of the questions as one of the headings, um, the H2s that we talked about earlier and really try to uh, tap into those search features. Um, writing buying guides that address all those questions there on the bottom half of the screen around brands, price, things like that. Um, so again, search results, free tool. You can search at any time, see exactly what's going on. This really is my favorite way of approaching things because it's just real time and you can see exactly what Google's favoring. But there are other ways that you can get that type of information. Um, there's specific uh, paid SEO tools or sites like Answer the Public, um, which is, uh, there's a free version of it. I believe it does limit your searches, but you can see uh, different FAQs around a particular topic, as well as um, also asked.com. And uh, we'll be including some of those resources in the handout that Brett mentioned earlier. So uh, again, don't feel like you need to memorize all of those. So just to wrap up a bit from our conversation today, um, we went through a lot, of course, so I wanted to just touch on a couple of the highlights. So if you take away anything from today's presentation, just understanding there's going to be things that are out of your control. So we talked about things like seasonality, uh, the one-off events, like I mentioned the uh, promotion or the sale or being featured on a prominent news outlet, those Google updates that can happen and do happen on a regular basis, those out of control things, use those learnings to create content that is evergreen and impactful and use that as a way that you can improve the user experience on your site. So just because there's things that you can't control, there's still insights that can be garnered and things that can be applied. Regularly monitoring your site for experience improvement. So again, going back to the more technical side of things, looking at page speed, schema, navigation, making sure that you're taking a look at those on a regular basis and you know making sure that your page speed is staying optimal now i will say the question will probably come up well what is a good page speed there isn't really one it's it's generally benchmarked against comparable websites so you want to just be striving to improve that and not be failing core web vitals you want to at least be passing um, so i would focus on that before getting into the nitty-gritty of page speed but again making sure that you're taking steps to continually improve that um, and then get improve your chances for ranking on those cert features that we talked about like featured snippets and those people also ask and those can be achieved again through things like schema the page structure that we talked about with the headings and things of that nature. Making sure that you have a thorough understanding of your consumer and what's important to them. This one seems, I'm sure, very obvious and not directly related to SEO, but it's probably the most important thing that I will talk about today because, again, Google is so concerned about making sure that your content and everything about your site is consumer centric and consumer first and foremost. So it's really important that before you even dive into any of these other things, step back, 
do an audience assessment, define who you're going after, understand what's important to them, really have those audience personas flushed out. And then from that also, make sure that you know your competition. So you probably have competitors in mind that you keep tabs on, of course, but also taking a look at who's ranking for your top keywords. I like to call them perceived versus search competitors. So your perceived competitors are the ones that you're like, yeah, I, this guy's you know, my main competition. I really want to take him down. But then you also have your search competitors, which you may say, well, I don't really think that site, they're, they're not quite the same as me. You still need to be concerned about those because they are showing up where you could potentially be showing up. So it's important to also assess those search competitors. And then making sure, again, that your content strategy is really centering around consumer and competition. So consumer centric, looking at your competition, what are they doing on their pages that are ranking well? How are they structuring them? What topics are they talking about? And making sure that you're incorporating those as well. And then finally, considering factors beyond search volume. So it's very easy with keyword research to just say, oh, well, this keyword has hundreds of thousands of searches. I'm just going to pick all of the ones that have the most search volume. Now, I think it's good to take a combination of high search volume and low search volume, mid search volume, just depending again on the intent of the page. But don't just fixate on search volume. Make sure that your keyword targeting is really aligned with that page content, the consumer intent, and where they are within the sales funnel or their, their journey in the research process. So put yourselves in their shoes. Uh, you know, Is this something that you would be searching for? If you're not sure, I don't know if this is the right keyword for this page, again, go back to, to Google and put the keyword in search results and see you know, what comes back for that. Um, is it completely different than what you were planning to publish or is it in the same vein? That can help give you a sense of if that could be potentially the right target keyword for you. And so just a couple of resources here. I won't read into all of these uh, because we will be providing the handout that has links to all of these. But as Brett mentioned, we really pride ourselves on putting together a lot of valuable content and training um, for all of you. So would love to have you go check out some previously recorded webinars that we did um, and some blog content as well that's just related to um, content and some of the things that I talked about today. So again, we'll include those in the handout for you to reference. We think you'll find them really helpful. Um, as well as some upcoming workshops that we have. So we do different topics every month. Um, next month, we'll have one on designing a test and learn approach for social media. Um, November, there'll be a workshop on using the power of data to understand customers and inform product strategy. So very in line with kind of what we talked about today. Um, and then in December, e-commerce analytics for outdoor brands. So we always have great things in, in queue for the schedule. Um, if you go to our website, you can see the full upcoming schedule and register there. Um, but all of that being said, here is my contact information. If you have any questions that you think about after our question uh, portion of the day today, please feel free to reach out to me via email or LinkedIn. And thank you all so much for your time.